tal? Muy buenos días. Bienvenidos nuevamente a nuestro webinar semanal de la Federación Mexicana de la Industria Aeroespacial. El día de hoy tenemos un webinar, eh, realmente estamos muy, muy contentos de tener a Janet Whitner, quien es el eh, representante de Assault Systems y el tema de hoy es transformando la cadena de proveeduría de espacio y defensa a través de una experiencia virtual. Próximo miércoles 25 tendremos eh, el webinar el respecto o enfocado en la creación de la Agencia Nacional de Aduanas, el cual nos lo estará presentando la licenciada Beatriz Ramos García, quien es socia fundadora del área de aduanas de Van Buren en Hamilton, quien apoya mucho a la FEMIA. Y pues bueno, para aquellos que, que es la primera vez que se conectan y que no saben ¿Qué es la FEMIA? Pues bueno, somos una asociación privada fundada en el 2007, ya tenemos 13 años y prácticamente somos la, la contraparte eh, en este sector espacial al, al gobierno. Representamos la industria, la parte de manufactura, mantenimiento, diseño, ingeniería y otros servicios. Tenemos arriba de 120 miembros, el cual 80% de, el, el 80 de las exportaciones de la industria de este país vienen de parte de nuestros miembros. Eh, prácticamente el origen del capital es 35% nacional, 65% extranjero y como dije, bueno, somos la contraparte al gobierno federal mexicano en este sector, colaboramos con los organismos internacionales y pues recientemente la, la FEMIA eh, somos ya un nuevo miembro asociado de ICAYA, que es el Consejo Coordinador Internacional de las Asociaciones de la Industria Aeroespacial, en el cual participa todas las asociaciones de la Unión Europea, Estados Unidos, Rusia, Japón, Singapur, Canadá, Brasil. Adelante. Bueno, estos son algunos de, de los logotipos de nuestros miembros, los cuales son miembros activos de la, de la asociación. Y este es el equipo que hace posible la operación de la Federación Mexicana de la Industria Aeroespacial. Tenemos a Luis Discano, nuestro presidente ejecutivo, quien está ahorita también en, en un webinar presentando respecto a los temas de la industria a raíz del, del nuevo tratado entre el TEMEC de México, Canadá y Estados Unidos. Pamela Arellano, nuestra directora de operaciones. Mónica Vega, directora de promoción. Javier Hurtado y Enrique Maldonado, quien hacen posible el equipo de desarrollo de proveedores a nivel nacional. Mariano González, nuestra gerente de gestión e inversía, y Marta Ortuño, asistente de dirección y administración de proyecto, y un servidor, René Espinosa, presidente del consejo. Recordándoles también que del 22 al 25 de septiembre vamos a tener la Feria Aeroespacial México, eh, ahora por esta ocasión desde el Aeropuerto Internacional de Querétaro, eh, la FEMIA, somos un aliado estratégico para la Feria Aeroespacial México, y es importante que poda, podamos ser parte de este, de este evento, en el cual van a tener eh, grandes exposiciones respecto a los temas, no solamente de la industria, sino también de la aviación civil, la parte militar, la parte de tecnología, educación, y va a haber eh, unos ponentes especiales o foro especial respecto al liderazgo de la mujer. Esta es la, la gran Feria Aeroespacial de México, del 22 al 25 de septiembre, para que por favor eh, nos acompañen. Les recordamos que la sesión de preguntas y respuestas al final, ahí van a ver, este, las pueden poner en nuestro chat, y recordarles que eh, debido a nuestro ponente, el día de hoy pues tendremos la, la presentación en inglés. Now I would like to introduce to you Yannick Whitner. Uh, Yannick currently manages the SOL systems uh, worldwide indirect sales in the aerospace and defense industry and helping accelerating innovation drives efficiency and move to the factory of the future to allow for greater agility on production rate. He held several management and leadership roles in the sales system sales, marketing, technical sales, services, alliances, and industry consulting organizations. Yannick also worked for several, several years with major clients as a sales systems on-site representative to deploy their PLM processes. He holds a MS in automation from one of the top French engineering universities. Yannick, it's a great pleasure to have you and a great honor to be hosting this webinar. As we all know in aerospace industry, the SOL systems is the heart 
of engineering and every single plane has something related with assault systems. So it's a great honor. Welcome. And I pass you now the control. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much, Rene. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. And hopefully you can still see it by now. <clears throat> right? Yes, we, yes, we can see. Okay, good. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for attending this webinar. This is my pleasure to be here and to support, uh, you know, the FEMIA Association. Uh, that's uh, that's an honor for me to be here, actually. Um, and um, my my only uh, problem is that I cannot do this presentation in Spanish. So uh, sorry for that. Uh, I speak a couple of languages, but Spanish is not my uh, my forte. So um, I do it in English, as you may. Uh, recognize from my accent, I'm, I'm in fact, uh, you know, a, a French native, but I'm based in Boston and part of the industry team, uh, the and the industry team. Uh, and my job is to uh, make sure that we accelerate the penetration of our solutions within the end industry. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I'll start the, the presentation. <clears throat> The presentation is about you know what it is that is going on and uh, in the in the supply chain overall and uh, how you as a, as a, as a customer or as a prospect uh, you can take advantage of data systems uh, solutions. Uh, we'll talk about a virtual twin. Um, this is a, a concept that has emerged a couple of years ago. Uh, we'll talk about it, uh, you know, more in details and uh, see how it this applies to the transformation going on today in the industry. Uh, with that, uh, let me uh, go to the first slide. If it works, yes. So I have, you know, four very simple chapters in my presentation. So who do we, who we are, right? Um, I was assuming when I did, uh, you know, create the presentation that, uh, you know, we might have, you know, in attendance some companies or people that do not know well DASO systems. And I must say that the company has changed so much over the past uh, years that, uh, you know, it's always good to have a refresh on that. Uh, second point is about, you know, what do we see uh, happening in the, in the industry and especially in the supply chain? Uh, third point is to talk about one solution that we have crafted, especially for the supply chain called engineered to fly, uh, and a conclusion. So uh, with no further ado, let me go to the, um, to the first section, who do we are, who we are. And, you know, to, to make it simple, we are the, you know, what we call the 3D experience company. Uh, the first point being that we are a purpose-driven company, so our motto is really to harmonize um, product, nature, and life. And you will see, you know, some aspects of it during this presentation. Uh, we have about 20,000 uh, passionate people over the world in 130 countries, um, many sites, almost 200 sites and one global R&D uh, being uh, you know, managed through the connection of uh, 69 labs over the world. Um, we are a long-term driven company. Um, the composition of our shareholding structure has been consistent since the introduction of the systems on the stock market. And what it allows us to do is to have a very stable uh, shareholding structure, which means that, you know, we have a, uh, the, the capacity to be uh, one step ahead of the competition by being able to invest long term on, on you know, r and We have about uh, 12,000 uh, partners in, you know, all the domains that we are covering with our solutions, you know, from software, technology, alliances, consulting, content, online services, etc. Uh, and uh, probably the most important for everybody here is that, you know, we have today uh, almost 300,000 customers worldwide. 
in 11 different industries. Uh, and the uh, fundamental aspect of this is that uh, we are partnering with clients who are the leaders in their, in their field. And so that we co-develop with them, you know, the cutting edge technology and uh, to be able to be, you know, again, one step ahead of our competition all the time. Okay. Uh, not worthy is probably the fact that, uh, you know, uh, for everybody here, we have, you know, about 26 million users uh, worldwide. So it's, uh, it's a country by itself, if you look at it. Uh, okay, so uh, our legacy, very quickly, you know, we've been in business for 40 years, right? We started in our space. We're still heavily invested in aerospace. As you said, Rene, you know, everything that is flying has some of the Dassault Systems technology results in it, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, we have introduced the 3D Experience platform back uh, in 2012, almost 10 years ago now. Uh, I'll talk more in details about it because this is a, a key component that, uh, that, uh, that is uh, supporting all of our uh, solutions. And we have entered a new era uh, lately, which is uh, you know, what we call the virtual twin experience of humans. Not only being able to fully model a human body, being able to engineer drugs, being able to engineer medical devices, but also to see what is the impact of products, for example, on the human body, right? So this is, comes back to our motto, which is to harmonize, uh, you know, uh, product, nature, and life. Uh, Next, um, just to uh, to make sure that everybody knows that uh, you know I talked about the fact that we are supporting eleven industries, you know aerospace being one of the key core industries for us, of course. But um, not well known probably today is the fact that we have twelve different brands. Uh, you might know us because you're using Kitia, because you're using SolidWorks, or because you're using Innovia or Simulia. But there are many other brands in our portfolio. Uh, that support, you know, all the processes, you know, in those uh, in different industries. They all rely on one common infrastructure called the 3D experience platform. And talking about platform, I wanted to, to make sure that we were, uh, you know, uh, sharing, you know, some, some common definition about the, the, the platform. What is it that we call a platform? You know, a lot of people call a platform a different thing, right? So uh, let me take an example. When you log into Google, right, you only have to log in once first. And you can navigate between the different applications while using the same authentication, right? When you receive an email, for example, in Google, and when the email includes an appointment, you can right away put the appointment in your calendar, right? If you're sharing documents, they are real time, you know, documents being shared and you can see the changes that your colleagues are doing, you know, on the document, right? So basically, uh, the data is linked between all those applications. This is what it means, right? Um, the second example is your iPhone or your smartphone, you know, same, right, for the, the other uh, non-iPhone uh, uh, infrastructures. Uh, your phone uses locations to automatically feed applications, for example. It connects multiple uh, accounts and data on, on, on your phone and uh, takes the data that are relevant to using the applications, right? You can connect, by the way, your phone to other devices, right? Uh, so that uh, um, you can manage, for example, the temperature in your home, blah, blah, blah. Right. So whether it's Google or your phone or for the same token, you know, any social media platform, the relationship the user has with data is very similar. In fact, all the data and the information needs to be at the fingertips of the user. Right. So that so that, you know, he doesn't have to search for it. Right. 
and you need to be able to quickly and seamlessly transition from application to application for many different tasks every day. You need to be able to collaborate, you know, with your different, uh, you know, colleagues, right? So this is what we've done basically with our 3D experience platform. You see on the right side of the screen, the 3D experience platform with this very well-known compass on the top, as it gives uh, four quadrants. But, you know, you see that, you know, when you log into the platform, you have a role, right? And this role gives you access to a number of applications that are based on data that are on the platform. So those data are available in some form or another uh, to the different uh, applications that are being shared with all the, the, the stakeholders on the platform. So this is really, you know, very similar to the, you know, some of the platforms that you see in Google, iPhone, et cetera, et cetera, social media platforms. Uh, here, of course, on top of it, we have applications, that are, you know, highly scientific, uh, you know, applications, you know, CAD applications, material engineering applications, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this being, uh, you know, introduced, uh, let me uh, jump to um, who do we serve? So we serve all the different segments of the end industry. Uh, of course, you know, one of the major segments is the end industry suppliers, okay, in terms of, uh, you know, number of companies that we serve there. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is a snapshot of, you know, the, 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 the emblematic um, customers that we have in those different segments. Um, so what do we see uh, the current trends um, in the industry? And, uh, you know, I will really focus on, uh, you know, what we see, you know, for the supply chain. Uh, there are other trends at play, you know, for other segments, you know, space, defense, et cetera. But, you know, I've chosen to really focus on the supply chain here. Uh, and, you know, the first one, I mean, quite obviously, is the versatility of the demand. Right. Um, the pandemic has showed us, you know, unprecedented you know, change in market demand, you know, from 5% increase or growth to, you know, minus 50 at least in terms of, uh, you know, passenger transportation. So uh, what it means to suppliers is that they need to adapt their production rates, you know, to the demand from OEMs in all sectors of the end industry. And uh, so, and uh, which requires actually high flexibility in the production systems, right? Trend number two is increasing product complexity, right? So this is not new. This is something that we've been seeing, you know, for the past, you know, years, but, you know, with some new things emerging, still, you know, uh, new materials, new processes, you know, like additive manufacturing, new propulsion technologies, for example, new electrical flight controls. Um, those are just examples of product and process greater complexity. You have new categories of products as well, you know, smarter aircrafts. Um, you have um, uh, autonomous aircrafts, right? Um, and you have new social and environmental pressures going on, you know, with, you know, reducing the carbon footprint of, uh, of the vehicles. So all this, uh, you know, contribute to, you know, an increasing product complexity that has to be managed. Trend number three is really, you know, the evolving competitive ecosystem that we see everywhere. Um, various forces are at play that are transforming your traditional supply chain into really what people call value networks. Um, and um, suppliers really uh, in that environment have to differentiate themselves in this environment, right? As a consequence, um, they have, you know, um, um, not uh, whatever their size is, right? They have to uh, carefully craft their proposals when answering to RFPs from potential customers and manage extremely precisely uh, their bidding process. So the name of the game here is to protect or increase their margins. Right? And trend number four is about, uh, this is not new either, but you know, this is really probably uh, more and more stringent is safety and quality standards, right? 
the, the AMD market is highly regulated to ensure you know, the safety of all. Um, so suppliers have to comply with quality standards and safety regulations in all countries where production and delivery occur. So this adds, adds up you know, a level of management complexity. So this is, you know, what we see as the key trends going on today in the in the supplier segment. Uh, so now, you know, I want to uh, to discuss, you know, what do we do ourselves, you know, as a as a company, as an innovative, uh, you know, company providing software to customers. What do we do to help them? So the first point that I want to make is the, you know, how these trends that we just saw translate into uh, daily imperatives for companies. The first imperative is to ensure flexibility of rate, right? It's very clear since the pandemic, right? And this can be done through three different levels. One is to define manufacturing processes sticking to engineering specifications. So the link between engineering and manufacturing. The use of digital twin, of your production means to plan, simulate and optimize the real production and the planning of your production operations and your supply chain logistics and quickly adapt scheduling to respond to, you know, any event like production issues, you know, uh, machine breakdowns or changes in demand, right? So this is the first uh, imperative. The second imperative is to accelerate innovation well, you know, this is this can really be achieved through the use of digital twin uh, of the product to simulate and validate new concepts and more, more new concepts, right? That you that you can test and their performance. Number three is to ensure business con continuity and sustained growth. This is as well, you know, something that we've seen as a consequence of the, the pandemic, essentially, right? Um, how do you ensure business continuity when people work from home? Well, you need to ensure seven by seven, 24 by 24 collaboration from anywhere, right? How do you do that? Well, if you're connected to a platform that gives you access to all the data that you need to do your work, if you can do it from home, from home then, you know, you answer this imperative. Um, and, um, sorry, I did the switch to... Sorry, so let me go back. Go back. Okay, here. Okay, and uh, so this is for uh, for the third, uh, you know, business imperative. And the last one is to ensure program compliance with contracts and regulation. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, you know, this is about streamlining collaboration, you know, between the company stakeholders connecting you know project management and product definition data and uh, you know tracing product information and data dependencies uh, from requirements to working project have the full traceability of what's going on you know in your company to um, uh, to comply with uh, APQP standards okay uh, so, our neighbors, you know, are, you know, oh, how do we help achieve these business imperatives? So through the uh, four different, uh, you know, key topics, basically. The first one is to establish integrated technical stream processes. So here on the, on the top left, this is about connecting digital information from conceptual, social, legal requirements to design, engineering, manufacturing instruction, programming, and this all along the specialized technical streams like you know, composites, sheet metal, machine parts, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really your virtual twin of your product here. Then on the bottom left, you have the manufacturing process engineering and production planning. This is about virtually plan, program, simulate, optimize the manufacturing processes um, in, a, in a virtual twin of the manufacturing plant from a single machine. So it can be a single machine, uh, like a you know, NC machine, robot, or whatever it is, you know, uh, editing manufacturing machine, etc. 
to a complete assembly line, whether it's uh, manually managed or, or operated or uh, fully automated. So this second, you know, quadrant is about you know the virtual twin of your production means. Right? Then on the top right, you have you know. The, the governance and control processes, right? It is about, you know, storing, classifying, tracing, configurating uh, multiple disciplines, engineering, manufacturing or maintenance information. You manage the program's contributions there. You orchestrate the collaboration processes, etc. So this is about, you know, really having a management cockpit of your project and program a single version of the truth of all this, because you're not duplicating data. The data that is there is always up to date. And this is your collaboration platform in a unified process and data uh, environment. So this is truly, you know, what we call the, the business platform at play here. And the fourth, uh, fourth aspect here at the bottom right is that, you know, all this happens to be on the platform that I did introduce earlier. And so you take advantage of all native business capabilities of the platform, right? So I will call out two key ones in my mind. One is uh, to ensure the digital continuity of your enterprise. Two, it's to, you know, is related to the inclusiveness of the platform, meaning that you can include all stakeholders that have a need to be uh, you know, involved in those uh, processes uh, in, in the platform so that you, um, you, you, you get everybody to interact and collaborate on the same data. Okay, so let's uh, now um, go to, so how do we start, right? Okay, so what, what did we do ourselves, the systems, to help in all this, right? So this is quite simple. We have carefully crafted a solution made for AMD suppliers, and the name of it is Engineered to Fly, right? You can see in the middle, uh, this is based on platform, right? And this tackles the three main domains that I just explained, right? So as you see, it supports, you know, basically uh, the vari a variety of technical processes of the various uh, technical streams right here. It includes the key uh, production planning and engineering, and it also supports, you know, fully the governance and control processes aspects. Okay. So now we'll, we'll go into more details about this solution. But before that, you know, just wanted to make a quick uh, snapshot at, uh, you know, uh, the fact that this solution is on the market for, you know, the past uh, two, three years, uh, that we've been having a lot of success with it, with, uh, you know, a lot of different companies, companies of, uh, you know, different sizes. Uh, and we're hoping to add many more in the next month because we see an increased pressure from suppliers to drastically optimize their operations to increase their top line and their margin. So they're asking for help, basically. So um, now let's move on to the first quadrant here, Check, checking on time. Okay, um, let's move on to the first quadrant here, which is the integrated technical stream processes. So again, you know, here, this is about the virtual train of your product. So I'll take a couple of uh, examples. I, my, my point is not to go into the details of each of those examples because we need several hours for each of them, right? So just to give you a snapshot of what's possible and what comes up with, uh, with this solution. Uh, so if we take composites as one example, um, what are the typical design to print composite supplier activities, right? So when a composite supplier receives, you know, information from the OEM, so what does he receive? He receives, you know, more or less detailed composite structural specifications. He has to detail the plies. He has to prepare the plies for manufacturing. He has to prepare the manufacturing processes with the ply book, tooling, programming, etc., and validate the structural performance of all this. Produce, cut, and assemble, right? 
So our solutions um, is, I mean, our solution for that is an end-to-end -end solution to design, optimize, validate, and produce those parts, right? So you create and modify, you know, price in this solution. You optimize the performance and weight of the composite parts. You minimize the development cost and prototyping by taking into account the composites, manufacturing constraints, all along the design process. You can predict the manufacturability of the composites part with advanced simulation, uh, you know, whether it's manual or automated layer process. Um, you produce best in class composites outputs for downstream manufacturing processes, including you know, the laser projection devices. So those are some of those uh, you know, capabilities that we can show you more in details if you're interested. Uh, let's go to the next one, sheet metal. Okay, what are the typical, again, typical activities? So people receive more or less detailed metallic structure specifications. They have to detail the sheet metal parts. They have to prepare the parts for manufacturing, you know, making sure that you can unfold or fold them, right? You have to prepare the manufacturing process. You have to validate the structural performance again of uh, what is being produced. You have to produce, you have to cut, you have to assemble, right? So, our solution again is an end-to-end -end solution for sheet metal. Um, we're guiding users in creating the sheet metal parts, you know, the flanges, the uh, joggers, the cutouts, uh, the stamping uh, surface, etc. Uh, we run unfolding, flattening simulation just to make sure that this can be produced. And we create all the manufacturing documentation which has to be associated, right? So again, you know, this is something that we can spend a lot of time on. I uh, just wanted to give you a snapshot at it. Uh, this is a, a complete end-to-end -end process, you know, from you know, conceptual design to, uh, to manufacturing. Metal part, you know, machining of, uh, you know, metal parts. Um, again, here, you know, this is about, you know, uh, getting a more or less detailed design of a part, optimizing it for, manuf for, for machining and preparing the manufacturing process with the tooling definition, with the programming of the machine um, to produce and assemble when necessary, right? So again, you know, our solutions support the end-to-end -end process. Um, to define the tooling, to define manufacturing programming, you know, for NC machines, for lathe machines, for robots, etc. Simulate the material removal and validate programs, and also, you know, send the outputs to the machines, and also create the the, the work instructions. Right. Again, you know, complete process end to end. Um, here we show, you know, the, the output, but uh, basically uh, this is an end-to-end -end solution and we can uh, show you the details if you're interested. Uh, additive manufacturing is another one. I mean, you know, this is not, uh, you know, a, a very old technology, obviously. Uh, this, has, uh, this has started, you know, probably uh, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but basically, you know, I just wanted to uh, call out the fact that, uh, you know, we have, you know, an end-to-end -end solution again, you know, uh, that does, you know, engineering for uh, structural design, right? Leveraging the topology optimization capabilities to achieve a lightweight design that can be then produced by, uh, you know, using um, additive manufacturing. So this is a great way to optimize the, you know, the, 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 the weight of a part and to optimize, by the way, its uh, performance under stress and also to, to, to optimize the manufacturing process. And then, you know, as part of the solution, we have the preparation, the computation, the simulation of the manufacturing process, you know, for the addition of material. 
um, and uh, with capabilities to optimize all this and to reduce the print time and the material being wasted. Right. Uh, another example is electrical harness, right? We've been in that business for <laughs> like 35 years at least. Uh, but again, you know, here the idea is to say, you know, I don't want to go into the details, but this is to say that we support the end-to-end -end process from schematics, basically, to 3D design, down to work instructions and for board uh, layouts, right? So we can design and optimize electrical 3D harnesses. We can synchronize all this with uh, the schematics. We can uh, route of course, the 3D wires, and then um, obtain exact bundle diameters and also the length of the wires and the cables. And then, you know, we can generate automatically uh, full scale drawing for the people that will do the, you know, the, the manufacturing of it um, you know, for form board creation. Uh, I won't go into the details of that, obviously. We need a couple of hours. Um, and and uh, the last, uh, the last uh, example I will take is mechatronics. Uh, basically, here we're talking about, uh, you know, um, um, model-based systems engineering. So this is an end-to-end -end solution again to model the architecture of your complex system. So this is more for the you know for the very complex uh, you know uh, components, let's say, uh, and uh, where you know you have uh, you know mixed of um, mechanical, software, electronics basically, and uh, so we have an end-to-end -end solution for that uh, that uh, starts from decomposing the requirements then it uh, goes into creating the functional architecture, the logical architecture, you know, linking all this so that we have, we have full traceability so that we can make sure that you know, what is being, being implemented in the end answers the, the initial requirements. And of course we can you know, add you know, behavioral um, information for each component of the system so that we can fully simulate the behavior of the system and do what if analysis. Just the, the, the principle. Okay, so that was for the virtual twin of the product. So now, if we go to the virtual twin of your manufacturing means, uh, this is what we do. What we really do, we provide a virtual model of the production environment to define, validate, and optimize the manufacturing processes. Right. And we provide all the capabilities to define the manufacturing process plans, which, uh, which are you know, the sequencing of the manufacturing operations. Then we help maximize resource use in the physical world because we do offline programming and simulation of complex manufacturing systems. And then we provide as well you know, a key component which is the optimization, the planning, and the scheduling capabilities uh, to, so that you, you can react uh, swiftly to events, you know, such as you know, breakdowns, maintenance, change of demand, etc. So this is what it is about, you know, having a virtual twin of your uh, factory, basically. And this is what we show you in the little video on the top right. This is really what we what we show and what customers are doing today to make sure that they optimize as much as possible their manufacturing means because there is a substantial impact on the bottom line. Okay, um, third aspect is the governance and control of uh, processes. So in there, um, um, what we what we talk about here is really to put under control, you know, your uh, processes and your governance, right, of the, the entire enterprise. So it starts with, you know, enterprise planning management, right, you know, from your top enterprise goals and programs down to the detailed activities of each of the stakeholder, right, so this is the top left. 
Then um, we uh, we talk about you know product lifecycle management. You know having the capability to manage thoroughly the maturity stages of your design, the versioning of the design, the configurations of the design, etc. This is, is the, the top right. Then we talk about you know the entire management of the definition of your systems to maintain the consistency with and the traceability to the initial requirements. So this is the bottom left aspect, which is really the uh, model-based system is engineering topic here. And then, you know, on the bottom right, you know, this is about, you know, the multidisciplinary enterprise change management. So all this is, is available today, you know, in our solutions, and um, they rely on the basic capabilities of our platform. Talking of which, uh, okay, so this is all powered on the platform, yes. And what is it that it enables? Well, it really, you know, if I want to sum up, you know, the you know what the platform gives to companies. It gives the ability to fully support, um, uh, you know, the, the single digital thread. So to support their digital continuity strategy, right? So we talked about, you know, specifications, right? Requirements. We talked about, you know, design. We talked about manufacturing. Yeah, you know, with uh, you know the, the manufacturing engineering and the manufacturing operations management. We didn't talk about you know maintenance and operations, but that would be exactly the same topic, right? So all this has a continuity because you reuse information and you actually enrich your your definition throughout the, the life cycle. So what the, the platform is bringing to uh, the companies is really this possibility to have. Uh, digital continuity between all those things, uh, instead of, you know, like before having your know, silos, right? And then, you know, having difficulties to pass information from silo to silo. Well, not only this, but also to, you know, uh, manage changes because each time that you have to change something in the initial requirements, well, you have to redo all this. And then, you know, you face again the problem of uh, passing information from silo one to silo two, etc. Here, this is absolutely transparent, seamless. This is what we are talking about. Okay. Connecting. Uh, I'll. I'll I'll try to to, um, to to show you a video. Um, if the sound is not high enough, let me know and we'll switch it and make it available, okay? So let's go and you tell me if it is okay. Connecting to the platform, the program manager can navigate all the active programs with different OEMs, but also the RFPs, answers, and audit preparation, all managed as projects. All projects are created based on templates. It ensures the consistency of the processes and deliverables with the quality standard and the safety regulations. For example, let's navigate in the AES 9100 project templates. We can see the work breakdown structure with all the associated tasks and review the gaps. The business jet program the supplier is working on is called A101. These suppliers have won several work packages, all managed in the 3D experience platform. The program manager can monitor the progress at a program level with, for example, the pending tasks, deliverables, issues, and what additional effort must be performed. The program manager is accessing the Wingtips project dashboard. The schedule status is automatically updated when users are working on their tasks. Tasks can be linked to the expected deliverable and the release of the deliverable automatically completes the tasks. Then the project manager has constantly an up-to-date view of the wingtip project without any project review meeting. 
This dashboard provides specific completion diagram per type of tasks. It also provides a view of the progress to the Gantt chart of the project, then finally the traditional burn down evolution. The business status ensures that the risks are clearly identified and the issues are managed, but also highlight possible deviation from initial budget definition. The work breakdown structure provides the complete list of tasks with their attributes, status and deliverables. The same information is also available through a Gantt chart. Because of APQP, Advanced Product Quality Planning, the program manager is also asked to identify the required project phases and gates and provide all the mandatory deliverable and checklist when reaching a gate. Resources allocation requests and workload balancing are also supported across the different projects and programs active in the company. The documentation associated to the A101 project is organized by Bookmark. The project manager wants to check that the customer's specifications have been properly digitalized as declared by the responsible for these tasks. The requirements are automatically captured from the document thanks to the integration provided between MS Office and the 3D Experience platform. The requirement structure can be reviewed, every requirement being captured as a specific object with associated description, images, and attributes. And for sure, the project manager can access to a consolidated view of the requirements at a project level through a dedicated dashboard. PEX being properly digitalized, the project manager look after the next tasks to perform. The manufacturing resources have been defined and need to be reviewed, and the routing is in work. The project manager verifies that the assigned resources have a sufficient availability to perform the tasks. At a task level, the project manager can review in detail the content of the deliverable for a task and, in this case, check if there are specific resources specifications from the customer and verify if the specification has been answered during the next review. Thankfully, it looks right. The associated specifications have been linked to the resource definition tasks and the milling machine selected to perform the required welding preparation is compliant with the specification. The program manager is also reviewing the status of the routing task, mainly to verify that the previous resource has been effectively used. In a unique view, the project manager access the entire list of resources used in the plant the process with associated consumed items and routings, and a digital view of the plant. We can recognize the selected milling machine where the programmer started to work on optimizing the milling time. At this moment, the program manager is informed about a modification on the specific A101 project. The product engineer has been also informed that a modification occurred. The OEM invited him on his cloud tenant and then he has the capability to review this modification from his own cloud tenant through a dedicated dashboard. OEMs share the program schedule, including suppliers, and in this case, the OEM has assigned the task to his supplier to study the impact of the modification on the A101 wingtip. Remotely, the product engineer is reviewing the task in details with the different documents prepared by the OEM associated to this task. After this review, the product engineer remotely changes the status of the task to in progress, signifying the customer is looking at it. 
The product engineer is also reviewing what his customer has prepared to be put in the technical package. Still reviewing from his dashboard information hosted by the OEM tenant, the product engineer selects the engineering item corresponding to the wingtip, reviews the different existing releases, and identifies the last one, then operates a comparison in a specific widget with the capability to identify the differences in the product structure and 3D models. After having received the technical data package and uploaded it on the supplier tenant, the product engineer wants to review the impact on the manufacturing process previously defined. He will then identify a clash between the tooling and the wingtip that will require the manufacturing department to review their tooling definition. The quality manager is reviewing the change process through a dashboard providing change actions related to the project issues and gun chart view of the project. The quality manager will look at this specific issue more in detail, but also monitor the issues related to this project in a dedicated dashboard, providing a 360 degrees view on the issues management and the progress status and assigned resources for each one. The project manager is now looking in details the change actions proposed for this issue. The first one is related to the modification of the support to place the wingtip in the mailing machine. The second one requests to re-engineer this modified wingtip in order to decrease the weight. The quality manager can review the change status the people involved, the impacted object from different disciplines like requirements, documents, parts, the context, the reference documentation, and finally, can access to automatic reports of or history information. For this specific change, the supplier goes further than his usual build-to-print scope. <clears throat> I, will, I will stop the video here. Um because um just checking that i'm yeah i'm not muted uh because um um you know there are you know like five more minutes on the video uh but i wanted to give you a chance to look at the platform in action really where we're focusing really on the on the control processes here on the governance aspects and on the collaboration between oem and suppliers um as opposed to you know looking at you know the uh, the details of uh, you know 3d creation etc so uh now um and again you know if you are interested to you know see more of the video we can do that you know uh on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis no, no problem with that um now uh, uh just as a conclusion so we we did focus this presentation on engineer to fly which is one of the many solutions that the and industry team has put together for the and industry there are many more the idea being that this solution is uh, is like a starter package that you know uh, when companies need more capabilities than the ones that are proposed in this solution they can add up to it and you know do an a la carte if you wish menu and, and choose you know additional capabilities for more than our solutions but this solution engineer to fly has been you know uh, getting some of the components from co-design to target which is you know one important solution from program excellence from other solutions here you know uh, and we have packaged all that in this uh, in this solution uh, you can see the extent of the coverage of those processes you know, for each of the solutions that uh, I just introduced. The one on Engineer to Fly has those uh, 22 different processes being supported um, and more to come, you know, as we enrich the solution based on, uh, you know, customer of, uh, feedbacks. Um, just want to say that you know this uh, the 3D experience platform has been embraced by the major OEMs today, uh, and 
if you want to know more, we can talk about the details of it. But you know, this is a, you know strong endorsement of those companies to choose the 3D experience platform to really transform their business. And uh, you know, I have uh, three slides, three very small slides for conclusion. One is uh, uh, want you to remember that. Uh, Tesla Systems solution portfolio has been carefully engineered to meet the industry challenges. So this is one. Second aspect is that, you know, uh, we provide the capability to, uh, you know, for companies to embrace the digital transformation towards a model-based enterprise uh, strategy. So being able to model all aspects of the enterprise. And the last takeaway is that, uh, you know, all this um, comes with out of the box uh, capabilities uh, that provide, you know, to any company, whatever the size, you know, a very quick and, um, uh, and uh, a very quick uh, return on investment and uh, a total cost of ownership, which is minimized. Uh, that's it. I will uh, uh, just say that you, if you need additional information and demos, you know, locally in Mexico, for example, you can contact Marie Alejandra, who is here on, the, on this uh, webcast. And um, I will open to questions if we have time. Yes, Yannick, thank you very much. A very, very thorough presentation. And I think we will need more time to really go into deep of what all this uh, program, this platform is. Um, I had the privilege to see it uh, working in uh, Wichita State University, oh, yeah. Nair, and it is mind blowing. It's unbelievable. And it is something that is, is honestly worth experiencing and, and, and worth using. Um, we do have several questions that they they being uh, sending to us. Well, the first one, could you share the video? Yes, uh, we're going to be able to share the video. Uh, absolutely. And well, the first one, uh, what would be the advantages of being able to generate a virtual twin in terms of uh, savings, time and cost? Probably that could be a... <laughs> Uh, that's a kind of open-ended the question, right? Yeah, it, it, it all depends on the on the size of the company, the complexity of the products. Uh, you know, we've seen you know anywhere, and this is where what, what I try to put here. If I may go back here, this is the typical KPIs that we've seen with mm -hmm. some companies. You know, um, implementing our solutions. Right. So when it comes to uh, virtual twins, so if we talk about design and engineering, you can see that you know we have you know KPIs around forty to six percent of cost and time reduction. Yeah. When it comes to manufacturing, it could be twenty to twenty five percent. Again, it depends on you know the, the size of the factories. There, there are so many variables. It's very hard to, to answer to the question. Yeah, and, and especially I, I remember in testing, a lot of uh, companies and and local SMEs have been able to use the software or the platform to validate uh, testing with a PLM. I mean, it's, it's just to to see the instead of sending one model into a lab and wait till it fails you know you save so much time so much money doing it from the platform then you send the one and, and that's 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 unbelievable um for the smes what will be the first steps to be able to start or initiate a virtual twins uh model within the process of manufacturing uh, within the process of, okay, so where I would start with is to, uh, first of all, do, uh, you know, um, digitally model the manufacturing process engineering, so really the sequencing of the activities, so that you can run simulation, can run optimization on this. 
Um, second aspect, I would digitally model the, the environment of the assembly line. For example, if it is, you know, if we're talking about assembly here, I would model the, the line and you have capabilities to do that, which are, you know, quite cost effective. You can, you can scan your existing, mm -hmm. you know, factory if you want, and get that, you know, as a as a cloud of points, you know, in the system that will reconstruct, you know, the main, uh, you know, the main components, mm -hmm. and uh, and use that as the basis of your um, of your factory model, right? Mm -hmm. Factory virtual tree. And then you can then, you know, go into the details of, you know, a given station, for example, uh, create it in more details instead of canning, you can re redo some, you know, 3D uh, model, etc. in order to, you know, really have the more detailed version of it. And then, um, and then, you know, the third component I would do as well is really use, you know, one of the brands of the data systems called Ortems, Dermia Ortems, which is really the, the advanced planning and scheduling aspect. So if you have several stations and if mm -hmm. your um, environment, manufacturing environment is complex enough, that you have, you know, load balancing issues, for example, you would use uh, uh, R terms in order to balance loads and do what if scenarios. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that we've seen also ways to improve like uh, machining times and, and CNC and machining parts, how to improve the position or, or the speeds. That has been uh, something that we've experienced in a tangible way at a local SME, how to become more competitive in, in, in their production times. Um, what, what is the, the basic difference between a PLM and a digital twin? Uh, okay. Um, let's say that, okay, so the digital twin is really the, um, Okay, the virtual um, representation with all the details of your physical uh, product, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, PLM is about, you know, taking all the components, assembling them in a dynamic digital mockup. Mm -hmm. And being able to, uh, you know, manage, you know, the configuration, the versions, etc. So, in my mind, and you know, I think that everybody has a different answer to that question, to be honest. But in my mind, I see the virtual, the, the 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 virtual twin as being the exact representation of the reality with with the maximum accuracy and the maximum definition of it. Right, uh, you have you know the definition of for each single component down to the behavior of the component, mm -hmm. so that you can run you know simulations based on it. Got it. Um, got another question here to be able to initiate or start a digital twin. What will be the training available? to prepare or designers or engineers? So it's the training that uh, that would be available to the designers based on the, the exact roles and uh, applications that they would use, right? So um, we have, uh, you know, online training available, mm -hmm. right? companion, what we call the companion. Uh, that is available to our clients, uh, and um, and then you know uh, after you know this is this might be just uh, you know training on the job you know using you know a one of our partners or DASO systems directly to help you go through you know the first you know initial steps so that you know you you you're right away on the right course right. Sure. But, you know, training wise, you know, bro, training wise, it's about, you know, using the, uh, you know, selecting the right roles and applications to use, right? And this is where our uh, uh, resellers and partners can play a great role. 
and um, and secondly, you know, um, um, learning how to use best those uh, those uh, those applications. And again, this is where you know our uh, our resellers and partners are providing services in order to ease the process. Yeah, I must say, I must say one thing, you know, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I started my career using version three of Katia. Oh, wow. <laughs> Quite simple, as you may imagine. And um, uh, I mean, the system has nothing to do with what it was before. I mean, right now, I mean, today I can use, I can select an application on the platform and use it almost right away without it training. I mean, yeah. it's becoming, you know, quite intuitive. I mean, I, I, you know, nothing is perfect in life. So we still need a little bit of help and training, but you know, it has nothing to do with what was, you know, what, what it was before. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That's that's impressive. That's amazing. Um, you know, something I, I would like to, to, to remind uh, the people that are connected to this webinar are those centers that with the help of the SOL system with Concamine, the centers of uh, innovation and engineering that were, was open one in Chihuahua and along with the universities of the Tecnologicos and there I think one in the uh, central part of Mexico for automotive industry where the platform is available for the local SMEs. I mean, it's, you know, it's for a local SME it could be challenging to have all the tools, uh, the scanning, and you know all, all that platform available so the salt systems along with the efforts of the industry and uh, with FEMIA we've been able to to make these centers possible in Mexico and I think there's another one going to happen in uh, Tijuana and then another one in Yucatan for uh, training and the basis is this platform of the 3D experience so that's also with the efforts of your allies that have been being able to make it possible and affordable for the for the local SME. So I really encourage everyone to to investigate more about these centers. And this is the, the key that you were saying. We need to start getting our people uh, with experience and train and, and, and develop, you know, on, on our needs. Well, Yannick, any final remarks? Anything you you would like to to add to close? Oh no, uh, my apologies to be a bit too long. Um, I should have uh, watched the time uh, better, but uh, you know, uh, the subject is so broad that it's difficult to do it. You know, in forty five minutes, to be honest. Yes. But, um, uh, I encourage everybody that has you know questions or want to know more to contact uh, Adehana and uh, and we'll work together on and myself to bring them the, the right level of understanding and, and an answers to the questions. Perfect. Well, Janet Whitner, thank you very much for your time. This amazing presentation. Now I'm going to switch to Spanish. <laughs> pues, bueno, agradecerles a todos. Eh, recordándoles nuevamente el 22 al 25 de septiembre la Feria Aeroespacial México Eh, si necesitan información, pueden directamente con, con la, los organizadores de la, de la FAMEX o a través de la FEMIA, con mucho gusto podemos apoyarlos y guiarlos en esta importantísima Feria Aeroespacial en México. Y bueno, les recordamos que nos pueden seguir en nuestras redes, en Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn y bueno, también en nuestro correo electrónico en contacto directo. Y recordarles el próximo webinar el miércoles 25 de agosto para que nos acompañen. Por favor, el tema será la creación de la agenda de la agenda nacional de la Agencia Nacional de Aduanas. Muchísimas gracias.